we will be creating a cylinder with isometric ellipses. This requires that you first create an isometric crate. We will be creating a crate using technical drawing equipment. Start by first drawing the front corner, a straight vertical line. Proceed with the bottom 30 degree diagonal. Do this on both sides. Don't worry about how long these lines are. Just rotate your set square and do the same on the opposite side. Then mark off the depth of your crate. These two lengths need to be identical. Then rotate your set square so you make vertical lines upward. Do this on both sides. Now we can um, determine the height of our crate. Again, we go 30 degrees one way, then 30 degrees the other way. We need now just to pay attention to where the vertical line <coughs> and the front diagonal intersect. In those intersections, we place our set square set on top of our T-square and draw the back diagonal lines. Once you've roughed in your rectangle, uh, crate, you can now refine it. Introduce the central axis from corner to corner. This is where we can be placing our isometric ellipses. So we can now place our template along the uh, vertical and horizontal axes and draw in our ellipses. Our ellipses uh, very rarely will be exactly the size we need them just go to the approximately correct size. You can now join the top and bottom ellipses with vertical lines extending from the outer edges of the ellipses. Using this method you can create any number of different uh, types of cylinders and cones. Using a similar method uh, we can create isometric ellipses along a single vertical axis. Therefore, you don't need necessarily uh, to create a crate. You simply need to establish a center line based on an, an initial ellipse. You can, uh, once you have a center line and start at your top ellipse, then you can then do subsequent ellipses along the center line. Make sure you orient the template correctly along the center line. As long as you are careful with following an axis at 90 or 30 degrees, this method allows you to develop forms based on the cone, the cylinder and the sphere. We can use the centerline method <coughs> uh, to great effect with a front orthogonal drawing, that is the front view of an orthogonal drawing, because uh, an orthogonal drawing will give us all the appropriate dimensions. So we first begin with uh, getting a, uh, a front view done. We can start using the centerline of the front view. First we'll need a bit of tracing paper that we stick over the top, mask this down on the top two um, corners and now we can start with our template and align it uh, with the horizontal uh, axes marked out by each of the shapes individually represented in your orthogonal drawing. Now you can only go with approximate sizes rather than um, exact dimensions. So draw your first one in, then proceed downward and do this until you've done all the ellipses right through the front view. So once you've done all your ellipses you now have to actually join all the sides together. Here we have an example of cones, uh, truncated spheres and cylinders tall cylinders and very short cylinders. 
So um, all we're doing is aligning the ellipses with one another. Now, here's the whole thing done. Um, there are a few things to take note, especially um, the size of a sphere. Now, it's important that you actually draw a truncated sphere as a complete sphere rather than one that's just chopped off at the top and bottom. So um, note the spheres have a circle extending from the back of the top ellipse to the front of the bottom ellipse. So uh, <clears throat> you can find line um, the lines that you are keeping and erase all the unnecessary pencil marks. You can then use a light box to trace your design onto a final format, then apply color media and you're more or less done.